we're going to discuss examination of the placenta. Why is it important to examine the placenta? Remember that after delivery, we said that one of the main causes of postpartum hemorrhage is a retained product of conception, either the placenta or the membranes. It is important that you examine the placenta so that if you find any abnormality with the placenta, you hasten to bring out the products. You could have a, a retained lobe, you could have a retained membrane. So that depending on what you find, you go into the uterus to bring it out before the woman begins to bleed. This session describes examination of the placenta after delivery, the steps involved in the examination of the placenta, and ensuring that no products are left in utero. The normal characteristics of the placenta at term and abnormalities are also discussed. Now, if you want to know the abnormal, it is important that you master what is the normal so that anytime you see any deviation of the normal, then you know you have an abnormal abnormal placenta. Our session goes, by the end of the session, we want to be able to examine placenta after its delivery. We want to list the characteristics of a normal placenta so that we'll be able to identify an abnormal placenta. This is our session outline. We're talking about the placenta at term, examine the placenta, the functions of the placenta, abnormalities of the placenta, the membranes, and the umbilical cord. This is our major reading list. The first one is Reproductive Health Classroom and Clinical Activity Guide, and you'll find a checklist on how to examine the placenta. Now let's discuss the placenta at term. The placenta is also known as the afterbirth, and there's a temporal organ which is formed in the uterus during pregnancy. It is the structure through which the fetus gets all its needs from the mother. So nutritional needs, respiratory needs, protective needs, every need that the fetus has is provided through the placenta from the mother to the fetus. Now the shape, a term the placenta is a round flat organ. The size is about 20 centimeters in diameter and 25 centimeters 62.5 centimeters in circumference. It's about 2.5 centimeters in thickness in the center. And as it gets to the edges, it becomes thinner. At term, it weighs approximately 500 to 600 grams or one sixth of the baby's birth weight. The placenta is made up of coronic villi and the decidua vesalis on which the villi are embedded. The placenta has two main surfaces, the fetal surface and the maternal surface. The fetal surface. This is the surface that faces the baby in utero. The surface is smooth and shiny and it's covered by a thin layer that we refer to as amnion. It has blood vessels which can be seen coming from the umbilical cord radiating towards the edge of the placenta and becoming smaller and smaller until they disappear into the villi. The amnion can be stripped, leaving the coronic plates. So this is the placenta. You can find the insertion of the cord in the middle, and then you can find the surface being shiny, and you can find the blood vessels radiating from this umbilical cord on the surface of the placenta. Now let's look at the maternal surface. It is the part attached to the decidua in the utero or the uterine wall. It's dark red in color because we have a lot of maternal blood vessels in between the villi. And it is made up of about 16 to 20 lobes. And this lone, these lobes are also known as cotyledons. And each cotyledon consists of about 1,000 coronic villi. The coronic villi are, the are finger like projections, and there are small grooves which separate the lobes known as the sulci or ferrous. Now let's have a look at the maternal surface. We have said that it is dark red, it is always bloody because that is the site that receives the maternal blood vessels. Now what are the functions of the placenta? The, the placenta has so many functions and we can't exhaust all. Respiratory functions, there is exchange of gases through the umbilical cord, Nutrients are also taken from the mother to the fetus through the cord, 
and then if the fetus wants to excrete any waste, it does it through the placenta. It's also a protective barrier against any harmful microorganisms. We call it the placental barrier. It allows, it prevents a lot of organisms from entering, especially those with very big molecules, from entering the placenta. And sometimes if the molecules are very small, then they can pass through the placenta and then they become teratogen or they destroy the fetus. In the protective barrier, a lot of infections are not able to pass through, apart from the German measles and sometimes some virulent organisms like the syphilis. Now we want to examine the placenta. We've discussed the normal placenta, so when we see the abnormal, we should be able to detect it. So as you are examining the placenta, you examine it with a 